Let's talk about why we would use something like Melodyne rather than what seems to be kind of the easy route, which would be like an all-in-one plugin, like a, an auto-tune or logic pitch correction, where you just put it on and you put in the key and oh, well, we're done and good to go. Do it like a, like a, like a boss. Like a, like a boss. Do it like a, like a, like a boss. Like a boss. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Chris Bradley with Produce. Like a boss. And today we're going to talk about how to use Melodyne using only two tools, how to tune our vocals. Okay. Uh, this plugin certainly does a lot more than that, but there's really only two that you should need to get a great sounding vocal. So let's just jump right in. So the first thing you're going to, you're going to want to do obviously is purchase Melodyne from Celimony make sure that you've installed that. Um, if you did that while your DAW was open, make sure you close out your DAW completely and then reopen so that it has scanned that audio unit and then it could read it when you pull it into your plugins. So let's go ahead right here and just go straight into Melodyne and put that. Um, oh, by the way, guys, though, um, I was just using it. So it's in my most recent you're going to go to your audio units and then go to Celimony and then go to Melodyne to pull it in. Awesome. So we'll close that out, hit transfer. And then once you hit transfer, all you have to do now is push the space bar or play to get the audio coming into Melodyne. So let's do that real quick. Why'd you have to kiss me? Why'd you have to go there? When you were saying goodbye, could have just stopped there? I wish I could go back, look the other way. I wouldn't be here thinking about you today. All right, we'll stop it there. Perfect. So that's basically how you get it into the player. Really quick, let's talk about uh, Melodyne uh, ARA. This is a new feature that's been added in the last couple months, I want to say. And I was so pumped to see this because it actually really uh, shortens the time for tuning vocals. So you'd go to Melodyne. I'm just, this is a duplicate track of the first one that I've already created and go to ARA if you have this. And then when you do that, why do you have to kiss me? Why it's no longer in real time. It'll actually just scan the whole audio unit. So before we used to just have to sit there and like wait for it to scan um, each audio track. And now it does it in this like rapid time, which is pretty cool. But just in case you didn't have ARA, I wanted to do it with standard uh, Melodyne. And let's jump into the plugin. So the first thing I want to talk about is how to move quickly in Melodyne. Okay, so there's this is our toolbar up here, but I think a much quicker way to actually access it is to hit control and click. Okay, so control by itself is not going to get us there. It's control holding that down with my pinky at the same time as click. Aha, uh -huh. and then this is how we access all this, right? Literally, here's the only two tools that I'm going to teach you with today. We're going to go over the pitch tool and we're going to go over the note separation tool. And we're mostly going to live like in the pitch tool because when we're not doing anything, like we're going to stay on that one. Okay. So that's going to be our main tool. So I'm going to leave it off on that. And then I want you to keep in mind when you go to draft, like, let's say I'm on my, my note separation tool, right? Da, I can't, da, I can't move da. that note. Right. And I want you to think of all this, think of this as a piano, see the notes over here. Um, and then you see how it's uh, white and black. Think of it just like a piano. That's what it is. These are telling you what the notes are. So if I wanted to take this C and move da, it up, da. I can't do that in this tool. I have to be on my pitch tool, right? Now, not only that, notice how this isn't quite in the middle da, of the track. It's kind of like da, a little sharp. Da, well, if I'm trying da, to move that, it's going to move it relative half one step up to the same spot on the next step, right? So what I want to do when I'm moving my notes is I want to hit option right? and now I can move it fluidly. Otherwise it's going to lock into the grid. So just remember to hit option when you're moving your notes. Another thing to keep in mind is in order to start the playhead from somewhere, um, it's not like logic where you can just click and then push play and it's no, it's not going to work that way. So you're going to have to double click wherever you want to start your play from. So if I want to start listening from here, double click. I wish I could go back. Look, pause with the space bar. Start with the space bar. Double click. About you to stop with the space bar. So you're going to see me zooming in and out a lot pretty quickly. The, the way that I'm doing that is by hitting option and command at the same time with these two fingers. And then I'm actually taking my mouse and I'm just moving it up and down or left and right. Okay. So you'll find how to do that on your mouse, or you can use these little bars right here to go left and right. And then as you get to the edge of them, they turn into magnifying glasses, which allow you to zoom. Right. And that might be a little easier at first, but you know me, you know, I'm a fan of them. Quick commands all day. Let's talk about why we would use something like Melodyne rather than what seems to be kind of the easy route, which would be like 
an all-in-one plugin like a, an auto-tune or logic pitch correction where you just put it on and you put in the key and oh well, we're done and good to go why not do that well first of all um, that really is telling the computer to completely think for you. It's not giving you any control over the individual notes. And there's so much complexity in a singer's voice that like being able to use something like Melodyne re really allows you to be kind of like a surgeon. You know, you can go in and go, okay, so that note was beautiful, but it just drifted out of pitch in this one area. I'm going to go in and just chop that little area and then just bring that and then I'm going to smooth it out. Okay, great. I'm going to fit it back. You know, you're, you're literally editing rather than just doing like a one-stop shop is it one shot one stop fix all you know so um that is the beauty of melodyne and when it's done well the listener should not be able to tell that the, the vocal is actually tuned now when it comes to auto-tune that can be super super fun especially in a lot of modern pop and modern hip-hop it can be used stylistically you know think of like you know travis scott or you know drake think of Cher. do you believe in life oh, okay i cannot sing Cher. uh <laughs> think of t-pain Okay. And like all these singers, they can sing, but they're using auto tune as an effect on the vocal in the same way that a guitar player would use a pedal on their guitar to just as an effect. Right. And in that case, it's really cool. But when you get that robotic sound and you're not trying to, and you're not doing it on purpose, it's actually called artifacting and it, it's awful, it's terrible, and that is what we want to avoid doing. That is when you can hear the, the, the tuning and it, and it don't sound good. It's not done on purpose. Okay, so now let's jump in here. So these red lines that you see, that's actually, that's, that, that's the note, that is the pitch, and you can see it kind of drifting up and down, um, and you see that it actually hugs around areas, and that's where your vowels are living, okay? So right here, for example, I'm gonna cut that off that is a consonant that's a consonant that's a consonant you can see where the consonants are because the the red squiggly line is really hugging the vowels now why would we cut the consonants out and and by the way all those cuts i made they don't they don't make a difference in the sound right away i'm not i didn't just change anything all i did is i cut the consonant off because i only want to tune those open vowels and here's why um i'm just gonna sing like a line like i love you all the time I'm is where that is where the melody is. That's where the tone is. T -t -t. That didn't have any tone, right? So you would you would actually cut that off. You know, I love you every day. Duh, duh. If you don't put a vowel after a consonant, it actually doesn't have a tone. So we're not trying to tune that. So that's a good place to start is by chopping those off. And you can just do that visually by looking without even having to listen to it, right? You can just give a little, and like that right there, you see those little squigglies like that? That's usually, that's a vibrato. That's, um, uh, you know, a, a vibrato is going in and out of the pitch, but kind of living within that note. So sometimes a vibrato can go too much in and out of the pitch, and then that's when it can start to sound pitchy or flat. But when it lives right inside the note, that's the sweet spot. Another thing you want to look out for is when a line is going straight through, like right here, um, through one note that tells you that that is there's more than one note going on there because look at where the pitch is drifting so i'm just going to go ahead and chop mm. chop 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 that note it's me why do it and it's actually it's a it's a short one but it's me what me it's not just me it's me right um let's see what this is it's probably the same thing oh there when you there right so we can go through and we can kind of what I like to call sharpening the axe. We can chop around these squiggly notes because we know that those are where our vowels are and that's what that's where we want to begin our tuning. So now that I've done some chopping, I'm gonna go ahead and go control click and get to my pitch tool and let's have a double click from the where we want to start and have a listen. Why do you have to kiss me? Why do you have to go there? We we're going to stop right there. Another thing I like to do, just especially as a singer, is I'm very, like, uh, I like to be intentional with my notes, right? So this is actually my girlfriend, Emma, singing, and she is a badass, and, like, there's not a whole lot that usually needs to be done to her vocal because she's just really good. But I told her, I said, we're going to do some light tuning, and she's like, go for it, girl. What I like to do when I'm listening is I go, okay, what, like, break down the notes, like, why'd you have to kiss me? And then kiss isn't just kiss me it's kiss me right um depending on how she's saying it but that's how i'm hearing it in my head so i'm going to be looking for that and thinking where does that fall this is my piano right here on my left these are the keys those are the white and black keys right so why do you have to kiss me why do you have to why 
Get in there. I do it. One, two, there it is. Okay, and I moved that once again. I am hitting option to drag. Uh, once I'm in the pitch tool option to drag to drag that. So why do you have to kiss me? Why do you have to kiss me? Have to kiss me. Kiss me. Kiss. Another thing is when you're trying to get it in. Um, let's say I wanted to move it here. Here, if you double click it. It'll just snap it like right into place, like into like perfect place though. So you don't always want to double click because you want some imperfections in there. We are trying to sound human, but just when you see me, if I do like that and go double click, you know I'm s snapping it into the note. You have to kiss me. What? And that me is kind of breathy. I'm not going to mess with that too much. Um, Why do you have to kiss me? Why do you have to go there? Why do you have to go there? And see how, what is this? What's going on there? Why do you have to go? You, you. It's not just, why do you? It's you. Why do you have to? And it's happening very quickly, but you wouldn't want to just go like, or actually it might sound, let's listen. Why do you have to go? That sounds a little weird to me. It took some of the naturalness out of it. So I'm going to leave that dip, that little scoop in there. And then these, see this little yellow line right there? When you move your mouse over it, it's going to turn into this little X thing and you can grab those and that's actually going to smoothen out those little, um, those little transitions there. So you can do it. it it's creating a, um, it's creating a smooth, uh, the smoothness on your slopes, smoothness on your slopes. <laughs> Why do you have to go there? Why do you have to go you? Why do you have to go to go, to go there? When and then, oh. Go, go, to go there. When go there. Go is actually two different notes, and that's why I put them in two different spots. When you were saying goodbye, could have just stopped there. Okay. When you were saying you. So I'm going to grab those two and just go double click and pop them right into where I know I want them. When you were saying goodbye. When you were saying. There it is. When you were saying goodbye. Uh, Good. Good. There we go. And goodbye. Coulda just stopped there. Ah. Coulda just. And like, let's get a little snipper on it so we're not grabbing anything we don't need. Those are consonants, right? And highlight those. Double click them. Coulda just stopped there. Stop. There we go. Stop. Now, another thing I can do so far, we've been working with uh, just this part of the pitch tool, you can actually go to the modulation tool and the drift tool. So look, if I were to take this modulation tool within the pitch tool and go like this, da I could enhance the vibrato. Stop there. Woohoo! Or I can actually uh, take that vibrato. Da now watch what happens when I flatten it out too much though. Da just stop there. Stop. I mean, it sounds very, very, very auto-tuned, right? So I wouldn't want to do that, but you can use it to just kind of dial things in. So like, like right here, for example. Good and goodbye. I still hear the vibrato. It sounds clean. And by the way, we are doing like a pop, a trap pop song. So I'm not really afraid of getting like that polished, crisp, uh, crisp tuned vocal sound. It's one thing to do that. It's another thing to be artifacting, which just sounds unprofessional and like trash, but it's another to be like really tightly tuned and just sounding really crisp and, uh, and polished, you know? So, um, I could do the same thing here. You were saying good when you're saying <laughs> highlight, double click, grab these, pull them out. That's going to flatten that out. And you were saying goodbye, but that's okay. Cause saying totally sounds good there and you were saying goodbye could have just stopped there I'm actually gonna double click that into place and then grab that pitch tool, bring it just a little bit just stop there I actually that was a little bit much for me stop there yeah all right let's keep going I wish I could go back look the other way I wish I could bum, 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 bum. so let's get in there first let's snip where we need to um this is sharpening the axe before chopping the tree. I'm just cutting off consonant eats, you guys. It's not actually affecting anything. It's just preparing me for the changes I need to make, right? So let's have a listen. There. 
double clicking to start the playhead from here. There. I wish I could go. I wish. I wish. I wish I could. I I wish I could. I wish I could. I wish I could go back. Go. Go. Go back. Go, go back. Look. And then back, back is kind of like a whisper. I could go back. Look the other way. Look the other. Look the. Ah, but see how it didn't actually, to me, it didn't sound wrong before that. Back. Look the other way. But it is. I mean, like the, the note should be. Da, 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 da. So, but you see, it's kind of living in between both of those notes. So that would have been really easy to miss if I wasn't paying attention. Look the other way. Ah. Way. Other way. Yeah, there we go. Let's see what else we got here and see if there's anything. Be here thinking I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. Get to that pitch tool. Be. Be. And be here thinking. Here. here. Grabbing that with option and pulling it down. And be here thinking about you. Thinking. Be here thinking about you. Thinking. Be here thinking about you today. About you today. About you today. There we go. Today. You can get in there and get tighter. The more you pull these things in that pitch tool, the more you flatten out, the tighter it's going to be and the more, and the less human it's going to sound. So we want to, you know, depending on the style, especially some of the modern pop, it does get really, really, um, almost robotic. Uh, but you know, depending on what you're doing, you might want to think about keeping it, um, keeping a few of the imperfections in there and not tuning too heavily. So just remember your quick, uh, access toolbar by hitting the control click and you'll get in here here's your pitch tool which you're going to live in most of the time uh, this pitch modulation tool is going to help you to really get a hold on those um those those drifting pitches and uh, and then our note separation tool over here to the right is where you're going to chop those consonants off and if you notice i didn't do it on every single one and so that's what i actually wanted to close with was Use your ear. Always use your ear. It could be it could be so easy to get click and chop and you know happy in this and just look at lines and just go okay gotta be on the grid oh gotta chop around that red line. Listen to it first. Does it sound good? Is always the rule. If it sounds good, you might not need to mess with it and it might look weird. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You run an Aretha Franklin vocal through Melodyne and it's gonna be a lot of squiggly red lines and what looks like wrong notes, you know, so don't let this be this, um, don't listen with your eyes. Okay. When you're tuning your vocal, don't go, Oh my God, the red lines in and out and I'm all over the place. That's not the point. The point is to go, okay, I'm listening. In fact, when I tune vocals, I get in there, I look at it and then I look away when I listen back. I, I don't look at the screen so that I can't listen with my eyes. And then when I hear where the problem is, I go, okay, where is that? And then the red line is my guide and shows me how to make the fixes. Anyways, that is how to use Melodyne with nothing but two tools. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to grab a copy of my producer's toolkit. There's a, a link below. And uh, if you guys like the video, please like, please subscribe, please hit the bell, smash the thumbs up, and uh, of course, drop a comment. Let me know what else you'd like to learn about, and I will catch you soon. Cheers. Made me feel like it was gonna be something different And I never even heard from you again So Why'd you have to kiss me? Why'd you have to go there? When you were saying goodbye, couldn't just stop there?